morning and welcome to our lesson today. Today, the 9th of July 2020, our lesson today is about how the ancestors serve the community. And therefore, for a starters, we shall try to explain the meaning of the term ancestor. The meaning of the term ancestor. Now, Nana, what is the meaning of the term ancestor? Yes. We said in our previous lessons that an ancestor is a person, or let's call it people, who died a long time ago, before our lifetime. That means somebody who lived many years ago, before we were born. That person we call him or her an ancestor. Now, in traditional African society, ancestors were very important to the community or to the clan. This is what we want to see. Why were they considered uh, to be important? Or what was their importance to their community? Which role did they play? So that we say an ancestor, once you become an ancestor, it means that you are, you are perceived to have some importance to the community or to the clan. And how did this actually help the, those who were living? I went also ahead to explain that the living dead, these are people who we actually have met in our lifetime, people we have seen with our eyes, maybe lived with them, but unfortunately they are no more with, with us. These are what we are calling the living dead. You can see them, even though they are not there even today. You can see them in your mind because you lived with them. You knew them. Maybe from that experience of you have been with them or staying with them, you can be able to see them in your mind. So this is what we are calling the living dead. They are not part of the, After some time, once one dies, he or she becomes the, the living dead. From there, from there, we, after many years, this person becomes an ancestor. And let's now go to our, the main topic of, our, uh, of today, that is ancestor. What role did the ancestor play? Now, the following are some of the roles that the ancestor played in African traditional society. I'll try to explain very briefly each and every point so that you, you get what I mean. Now, in traditional African society, the ancestors were the founders. We call them the founders of the clan. They were the founders of the clan. What do I mean when I talk of they were the founders? They were the one who started that particular clan. We can call them, we can just look at maybe our four grandfathers. We can, they fall in this category, our four grandfathers or former grandfathers, not the, the immediate one, but maybe long, those who are, or maybe those who died a long time ago. They, fall, they were the one who founded or who started the clan, or you look at your own clan. People, there were people who started it. Therefore, those people who started it and they are no longer with us, they died many years ago, we can say they are the founders of your clan. Some of the ways in which they serve the ancestors and the ancestors serve the community are include the ancestors serve the community in the following ways. One, they taught members moral values, taught members moral values. Values are things that are cherished we talk about moral now, this, 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 it has something to do with morals. Morals. Many, the way, uh, the upbringing of children, most of the information the children got were taught by the ancestors. And it was handed from one generation to another. Therefore, we can say they taught members on moral values. Can we name some of the moral values that we know? One, yes, we have honesty. Yes, honesty is one of the moral values. Some, something that was highly cherished in traditional African society. 
Honesty was very important. It was one of the moral values that maybe we talk about today. Today we also talk about integrity. It's very important. It's also a moral teaching or moral value. We also have something like justice. Justice. We also have purity. Now when you talk about purity here, I mean the bodily cleanness not, and also the mind cleanness is very important to look at that. This means that purity was expected uh, to cover the entire person's body. That is, it is only not only just washing your body so that you are clean, but also overcome sin, for instance, you can overcome sin. The mind should be clean. Your action should also show that you are, you are also clean. That is, you are not associating what is, is evil. And this purity also was extended. It was extended. It had a deeper meaning. Meaning even the girls were supposed to be pure. Pure in the sense that they were not supposed to engage in any fornication before they were actually married. So this purity of body was handled, it's something that was taught by the ancestors uh, to the clan members and it had a great impact in their lives. In tradition of personally about purity, it's very important to note that marriage was a, a sin to be a very important stage. And as we looked in the previous lesson, we say that they were, everybody in traditional Afghan was supposed to marry. It was a role. It was a role that everybody had to play. The main aim was to, for the continuity of the, of the clan. Now, this clan could not actually be gotten or could not come if all these girls or these boys were not pure. Look at this life today, land. Things have changed. People are not, not no more practicing moral values. They have put moral value aside, and what they are doing is different from what maybe we teach in school, we teach in, this, in church, and this has made, had had a very negative effect to our, to our boys and to our girls. Therefore, it's good to always follow what we are taught. Now, in those days, boys and girls actually followed every bit of information they were given, and that's how they were able to grow up well. This society, maybe it's missing people who can really show them the way, maybe role, good role models, but they are there. The problem is that we have varied choices. And every day, as you are growing up as a young girl, a young boy, make the right choice. Once you make the right choice, ask God to help you, or ask God to help you make the right choice, and from there, you will prosper. That was tradition. The advice that we are given by our, our fathers, our mothers at home, and the brothers, let's follow in our church. Very soon we shall start going to church. What we are taught, let us put it in practice, and therefore we shall capture what I'm talking about, moral values. We shall grow to be people who are respected. Another thing that the ancestors did, maintain peace. Number two, we can say they maintain Maintained peace and also what I call harmony. Peace and harmony. Very important for any society to progress or to have a positive impact. Therefore, without peace, there is no development. I find that in traditional African society, people just like today, we have disputes. Disputes ar arise, and the the ancestors were there to help, to pull down the temperature, to be able to find an amicable solution for in case there was a problem. So they were called upon to come as peacemakers, and they were able to actually settle scores among the the people who were the two people who were in actually in disputes. Number three, you can also say the ancestors used their individual talents for the well-being of their community. Now here, when you talk about using individual talent, 
We had people like rainmakers. Rainmakers. Now they were called a corn. The rainmakers were called a corn by the entire Florida community to help, especially when it did not rain for a long time. Now, in traditional Afro said, as I said in the previous lesson about death, everything had a reason. Anything that happened in Afro Indian said definitely had a reason. And people would not uh, sleep unless they found what the problem, the problem is. So in case there is a prolonged drought, rainmakers were called to use their talent so that it can start raining. Maybe to appease the gods, and these are gods in courts, and from there maybe rain will start coming. It was believed that maybe the drought was a result of, uh, let's say, something wrong that the community did. And now to come uh, to intervene or to be in a position to find a solution so that it can start raining again. Because people, when it, it is not raining, definitely we shall have famine, we shall have hunger. So people, they definitely will be dying. So to find a solution to that and to be in a position to control actually the drought, the rainmakers were called upon to help find uh, what made it not rain and they were able. In those days they were very much able. So they used the individual talents for the well-being of the community. How I wish even today as a learner you have a talent, you can use it for the well-being of the community. Many a times we have become, in today's life, we have become too much self-centeredness. We look at, at ourselves, what is good to us, and we forget about other people. So it's important that as we grow up, we have that culture that you have a talent, God has given you that talent, use it for the well-being of the community, for the well-being of others, for the well, so that God, through that talent you have, is glorified. Another reason that you can say, maybe, was in the importance of the ancestors was one and uh, number four that is number four they also advised the members advised the members of the clan and also punished wrongdoers now look here this person who has died a long time ago how were they able to advise mm -hmm. how were they able to advise this person who died a long time ago and you know that once you die there's no coming back again unless Yes, Jesus is coming back again to take his church. That is not uh, something to, to actually be uh, trying to say that it won't happen, it will happen. But now we know that once you die, that is the end of everything. Especially if you are not saved. Especially if you are not saved. Because I believe those who are saved. We should, now I say that in traditional African society, they believed in life after death. Meaning, they believe that this person has died, yes, but he's going somewhere to start a new, a new life. So there was that belief that there's, yes, there's somewhere where life will continue. Although they never knew exactly where. Now the Bible today tells us very clearly that we have eternal life. But for those chosen few, the chosen few, you can be among them. The chosen few you can be among them. Once you accept Jesus Christ into your life and start doing his will, now you have eternal life. Doing his will throughout your life, you have eternal life. Now let's come back to what I was talking about. These persons were perceived to also punish the wrongdoers, to advise members of the clan. How are they doing this? Maybe through dreams? I don't know. Uh -huh. Any other way that you think maybe they used? How could they punish the wrongdoers? For even the wrongdoers in traditional African society, we can have maybe the, those who practice witchcraft, anything that you do against the community, the ancestors will punish you. Maybe bad luck will come to these people, and that was one way of punishing them. Bad luck. You see? Sometimes you find somebody has been stru uh, struck by thunder. In those days, it was one of the ways to punish the, 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 the actual of those people. Or remain unmarried. It's also one way of punishing those people. Or death. 
is also one way of punishing the wrongdoers. Another thing was also to, to decide when the important, important ceremonies were to be held. For instance, the important, important, uh, uh, important ceremonies that we know of is maybe initiation, because the entire community comes in. Now, I say initiation is a stage between childhood to adulthood. It's just right. It's a right of passage through childhood to adulthood. Meaning that what has left, what he or she used, uh, he used to do during his childhood, and now he assumes new role as an adult. Because from initiation, the next stage was was to get married or become a warrior. Those are some of them. Then last thing can also say they guided the youth on proper behavior and conduct. So the ancestors play a very key role or important role in the lives of the, of the youth. They were able to give them moral behavior, good moral behavior. Also be able to impact proper behavioral uh, change in the, these boys and therefore these boys would grow up to be respectable people in the society. So we have seen the importance of their ancestors. They played a very key, a very important role. A role that maybe today it has been just so many questions because maybe parents are playing part of it, teachers are also playing part of it, uh, part of it and also church leaders are also playing part of the same. Because it's a good thing when the teachers, parents, and also the church, they come together, they advise our young men so that they are able to come. There are so many challenges as you grow up, and especially once you are in adolescence, that's the state where you can easily get lost. But if you have good advisors or good role models, then you will become the same. It's more that you know that without following what we are told, without following the teaching that we are given in the church, at home, here in school, then we shall actually not do what is expected of us. So today, learners, I want to say we are almost coming to the end of our lesson. And after now viewing all this uh, lesson, I'll also send some questions for you to answer. And the questions will be from exercise. I don't know if you have those books in your if you don't have them, I will put them or in. I will just send them to your phones. So I wish you well. I wish you well. Take care of yourself. Be disciplined. Follow the teachings of your parents. Now you are at home. Stop rooming here and there aimlessly. And definitely we hope that, as you have heard, School will, be, will reopen in January, so you have a long, long time at home. Not to just walk out, uh, around, not to lazy around, but to do something constructive. Have a timetable that will guide you. Plan your work. Also help in your, the course at home. And also always heed to the advice given to you. If you are sent somewhere, go very fast. Always make sure you have your mask on. Avoid handshake, sanitize all the time so that you are, you are safe from Corona. I wish you well and hopefully we shall meet in our next lesson where we shall talk more about uh, CRE. Uh, may God bless you.